In speaking about the work that the spies were sent to do, it says Moses, the Creator, uses a very specific word. By the Ver Hashem and Moshe Lemo, the Creator speaks to Moses and says, Shlach lecha anoshim, send people, v'yaturu et eretz kanan. The word v'yaturu is translated as they should spy or they should look over. But what is the secret of that word? V'yaturu et eretz kanan, of course, more importantly, what is Less, what lesson does that word have for us? So to explain it, the capitalists quote a verse from Psalms, and this is a verse that uh, the Ari said the person should say every time before he studies, and really as we will learn, really we should say this before every, everything that we do. It says in Psalms, Gal einai ve'abita niflaot mitoratecha. Open up my eyes so that I can see the wonders from Again, literally the word says from the Torah, but it means from what you're showing me. Torah means to show. So we say this verse translated means, open up my eyes, we say to the Creator, open up my eyes, so that I can see the wonders, the amazing and beautiful things that you're showing me. It says in the Zohar in Baal most of us know the section, that the purpose of study, the purpose of life, is to see what is behind, what is hidden by the clothing, the clothing of the Torah, of the teachings, the clothing of life. In life, there's always, always, both in, again, in, in, in learning and in life, there's always a, clo a clothing and there's the inner aspect. There's the outer aspect and there's the inner aspect. When a person sees to use a simple example, again, it can be a small challenge or a great challenge. Something happens that is not what we want. Something happens that is difficult for us to take in, that is difficult for us to, to, to be happy with. That's the clothing, right? That's the levush. What's the purpose of life? To be able to see the light, the niflaot, that is under that clothing. That's the entire purpose of life. Everything, everything that's around us right now today, there's both an endless amount of shells, clothing, and there's an endless amount of niflaut, there's a tremendous amount of internal light within it. Most of us, unfortunately, are still living the ex external life. We see and are influenced by the clothes and not by the internal niflaot, not by the internal light. The purpose of sending the spies was to awaken for them and for the Israelites and for us and to have the strength to see the internal all the time. So the secret of this Shabbat is Gal Enai, open up our eyes, open up my eyes, Ve'abita niflaot, so I can see the tremendous light mitoratecha from what you are showing me. Because everything around us now Everything around us, every situation, every person, everything has the levush, the clothing, and has the light inside. And what's our purpose in life? When we study, when we pray, when we come across people, when we come across challenges, to be able to remove the shell, to be able to remove and see past the clothing into the light, into the niflaot, into the wonders, into the tremendous light that is hidden behind that levush, behind that clothing. And that really has to be our constant request of the Creator. To merit, to constantly be shown what is behind the clothing. Because if, can you, this is the point. If you were able to live your life every single day, not seeing the clothing and seeing the light, there's never pain, there's never suffering, there's only light. What is our biggest problem? Our biggest problem in life is that we have not opened up our eyes, as Rav Ashlag makes clear, without going to the details, in the Introduction to Ten Luminous Emanation. That is the singular purpose of our spiritual work. Kichat Enayim, the opening up of our eyes. And this is the Shabbat of Kichat Enayim. This is the Shabbat when the eyes are opened, when you, if you ask for it. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu Shiabitu La'ome 
The word Ve'aturu. What is the secret of that word? Moses was telling them, listen. You are doing the work for all of us. You're going to come across things that will make no sense to you. You're going to come across things that will confuse you. You're going to come across things that will make you feel depressed and down and sad and in darkness. Don't get caught up in the clothing. Viatul, go deeper. Ask, beg for the light of the Creator to open up your eyes to see the light that is within what you're going to be experiencing, within what you're going to see. Vi masuken. And if the spies were able to do that, and if we're able to do that, you will be able to see that there is goodness. It is filled with goodness. But, and this is another level of understanding, or at least what we do, they saw, we see what is bad. We see Eretz, Ochelet Yoshvea, we see the, the, the challenges, we see the darkness. Ve'im lo hitra'amu bekas. Look, none of us are meant to be perfect. So that in the first second, we're able to lift up the veil of the clothing and see the light that is internal. But what you have to do, lead to awaken a desire to beg, he, she, they should have asked the Creator, They should have begged the Creator, open up my eyes to let me see the light that is internal. As he kiru omek, then they, they would have merited to see the tremendous light that exists within them. So, now we come to understand the second tremendous gift of the Shabbat. And if we realize, again, as Rabbi Shalai makes clear, this is really the singular purpose of our lives, the singular purpose of our spiritual work. Open up my eyes. That's my only problem. That's all. The only problem we ever have is that our eyes are closed that our eyes are focused on the levush, on the clothing, and we're not able to see the niflaot, the, the light that is within that clothing. So what do you do? It's very simple. First of all, you know that your uppermost, your, your, your first priority in life is to keep growing in this way. Am I able to penetrate the clothing today more than yesterday? That's my, the focus of all of my spiritual work. Right, we get caught up sometimes. Right, I'm doing these things. I'm doing my prayers. Even, 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 even connecting to the Zohar. Even coming, at whatever we do of a spiritual nature. But are we asking ourselves the most important question? Am are my eyes more open today than they were yesterday? Am I able to penetrate through the levush, as the Zohar says in Balotcha, and to see madetechot levusha deoraita? Do I see what is be, behind, what is covered by the clothing? If I'm not able today to see deeper into the light that is clothed than yesterday or last week or last month, then my spiritual work is not doing what it's meant to do. Because that's the singular purpose of all of our spiritual work, to be able to see beyond the clothing more today than yesterday, more today than last week, more today than last month. That has to be the focus of our work. And then the second part, so you come across a difficulty, you come across a small or a great challenge. And you don't have the ability in this moment, but you have to know. At least say, I don't see it, but I know it's there. And then what do you do? Then you beg. You say to the Creator, please, Gal, and you say this verse, Gal einai ve'abita niflaot mitoratecha. Open up my eyes so that I can see the wonders, the great light that exists behind the shell that I'm experiencing right now, behind the clothing that I'm experiencing right now. If you know that it's there, really know that it's there and beg for the light of the Creator to remove the clothing so you can see what is below that clothing, you will see it. What happens is that maybe some of us knows, know this as a concept, but in the moment we are not able to know it, and therefore we're not able to ask for it. So three things. First, it has to be clear to us the singular purpose of all of our spiritual work. The opening up of our eyes, as Rav Asha calls it in the introduction to the Ten Luminous Emanations, or as um, You Shall Choose Life, in the English translation, the whole, entire purpose of our spiritual work is to achieve the opening up of our eyes. What does it mean, the opening up of our eyes? To see always what is below the clothing of what we know as what is being shown to us. That's the first thing. 
to know this is the singular purpose. And this needs to be the question that we ask ourselves all the time. Do I see more of the niflaot, of the wonders, of the light that is behind the clothing than yesterday, than last week, than last month? Because if not, if I am not able, again, we're not meant to be perfect, but if not, I'm not able to, to experience and connect to more of the light that is behind that clothing today than yesterday, then there's something wrong with the way I'm doing my spiritual work. Because that has to be my singular, uppermost priority in my spiritual work. No, first. And then what do you do? So when you come across this situation where you're seeing the clothing, you're not able to break through. You have to do two things. First, you have to remind yourself. You have to be clear. You have to be certain. It is true that right now I see this as a terrible thing. I see the levush. I see the clothing. But I know with whatever certainty I can muster, with whatever certainty I can awaken, that there is great light within here. First. And second, you beg. You say to the light of the Creator, I know that there is tremendous light behind this clothing. I can't see it right now. Open up my eyes so that I can see the great wonders, the great light that exists in this situation, that exists within this person, that exists within this thing. And if you do those two things, if your priority in your spiritual work is to gain the opening up of your eyes, and whenever you come across these situations, you both know, you remind yourself, you awaken within yourself to whatever degree you can, the certainty that there is great light there. And then you beg the light of the Creator, open up my eyes so that I can see the light that I know must be in here. You merit the gift that the Creator removes the levush, removes the clothing, and you see the niflot, and you see the light within there. Imagine your life when there's no more clothing. When you see just the niflot, when everything and every situation, you see just the tremendous light that exists within there. That's Mashiach. That's the Gemara Tikkun. And that's why, again, as Rabbi Ashlag makes clear, the only blessing you can ever ask for, the only blessing you should ever give, may you merit to have your eyes opened. May you merit to have your life lived 100% of the time just seeing the light within everything, within every challenge, within every person, within every situation, because then there's never pain. There's never darkness. It is only our continued connection to the levush, to the clothing, to the external, that brings us pain, that brings us challenges, that brings us sadness. That's the overall understanding. But I want to also talk about three gifts that a person loses or gains, but loses if he does not push in this direction and gains if he does. When Moses sends the spies, he tells them something very strange. He says, amongst all the work that you're going to do, I ask that you take from the fruit of the land. Take from the fruit of the land. Why was it so important for Moses to tell the spies to take from the fruit of the land? So the Khatam Sofer says, that when the Israelites were in the desert, the man, the manna that they got from, from the heavens, was not a creation, yesh me'ayin, something from nothing, but rather all the sparks of light that would be in any fruit or vegetables or animals that they would have eaten, and specifically because their souls, as we learned, were actually connected to the land of Israel, so from all the fruit and vegetables and animals and food in the land of Israel, all those sparks of light came and were put into the man that they ate. Moses tells the spies, but when you're in the land of Israel, your sparks of light will not be going into the man that will be falling in the desert, but rather will be in all the fruits and vegetables and, and animals and food that you had there. But... The sparks of light in anything that we eat, in anything in life, only gather for the person who has certainty that it exists. If a person doesn't believe that there is light in this situation, if a person doesn't believe that there is sparks of light in this food, then not only are there sparks not there, but as the Kabbalists say, they literally run away from him. 
So the, Moses tells the spies, know that in everything that you're going to see, in every challenge that you will have, there's going to be great light. And therefore know that in everything that you eat and everything you come across is going to be sparks of light. But only if you have the certainty that it's there. And therefore he tells them, it's important that you eat. It's important that you go and make these connections because there's a tremendous amount of sparks of light for you if you know that it's there. But they, of course, didn't, on this level, didn't see those sparks of light. As may often, we don't. And the Kabbalists teach that what happens then is that not only do the sparks of light not remain in the food or situation, but they literally run away. If you're facing a challenging situation and you are not able to awaken a certainty that there is light in there, that's those sparks of light run away and you become right. Your thought about that situation or your thought about that food or your thought about that person becomes true for you. Because if you lose that consciousness and that certainty that there is light in here, that there is niflaot in this food, in this situation, if you're not able to awaken that certainty, those sparks of light run away. And they did for the ten spies in this understanding. And they do chas shalom for the individual who in every situation does not ha- awaken the certainty, as we mentioned earlier, that there is great light in here. And therefore, for instance, it says that the fruit became very heavy for them. We don't have time to go into the details. It's a beautiful, beautiful, and every year that I read it, it becomes even more beautiful explanation from the Ari, Rav Isaac Luria, about the fact that when the spies were sent, they received an ibur, a support of the soul from the 12 sons of Jacob. Into each one of the, of the 12 spies came the soul of one of the, of the souls of the 12 sons of Jacob. Why? To help them. To help them not fall. But what happened? What happened when they lost the certainty that there is light in the challenges that they were experiencing? The sparks of light, as we said, went away from that situation, from those things. Secondly, the Iburim, the support of the souls that they had, left them. Every single one of us, all the time, receives support from, from souls, great and small, for different reasons, to do our work. You come to a challenging situation, you should know that there's a spark, you might not, you probably don't feel it, but there's a, an assistance of a soul within you to help you go across that challenge, to be able to reveal the light within that clothing. But when you forget, when you lose the consciousness that there is light within that situation, that soul leaves you. Now you can't. Now two things. So two things have happened. The sparks of light in that situation are slowly going away. The soul that you've received to help you, or the spark of soul that you received to help you to go across that challenge to reveal <clears throat> the light within it has gone away. You've made it so much more difficult for yourself now. There's less light there, and you have less assistance. And then the third thing happens. It says in the Talmud, different angels travel in different ways. It says, Tana, we learned, Michael Be'achat, the angel Michael travels, when he has to go from one place to the other, he doesn't have to stop, he can do it in one second, one leap. Gabriel Bestein, the angel Gabriel, has to do it in two steps. Eliyahu Be'arba, Elijah the prophet, when he has to travel, he has to do it in four steps. Umalach Hamavit Bishmon, and the angel of death has to do it in eight steps. What does the angel of death represent? And what is, the, what is this whole story of how, what do we care how the angels travel? What difference does it make to us? We spoke about this before, as Ravashah explains in the wisdom of truth, the whole concept of chiyut, of life force, of, of spirit, quickness of spirit, elevated spirit. If a person has chiyut, if a person has a true connection to light to the Creator, he's light. What is the angel of death? The angel of death is heavy. What is Michael, who represents right column, the angel of mercy, the most connected to light to the Creator? Everything's easy. Not because things are necessarily easy, but because there's this chiyut, there's this internal spirit that he, the individual, he or she has awakened. It says, as we said earlier about the spies, 
Fruit became heavy for them. Life became heavy for them. What's the third and probably worst thing? When we're not able to open up our eyes, life becomes heavy. Why does life become heavy? Because you don't see the light within there. You don't even have, a certain, have any level of certainty that exists and you're not begging for the light of the Creator to show it to you. So who are you connecting to? To the angel of death. Everything takes longer. Everything's more difficult. Everything's heavier. It said, it says, in the, it says that eight of the spies had to carry the fruit. It became heavy. Why eight? Because they were connecting to the difficult travels of the angel of death. The angel of death has to travel eight times to get from one place to the next. Michael Da'acha. The angel, meaning we, as we connect to the internal light that exists within everything, everything's easy. It doesn't mean that there aren't challenges, but the challenges don't challenge the person who has chiyut. Don't challenge the person who has that certainty that there is light in here and therefore begs for the light of the Creator to open up his eyes and their eyes are open. It's a cycle. Every situation, great or small, we have a choice. If we've made our priority in life to open up our eyes and we know that nothing else is important, but my spiritual work, nothing else that I do, if I am not able to grow in the opening up of my eyes, if I am not able to see more of the light that was previously hidden by the clothing in the situations and people in my life, today more than yesterday, I'm not doing the spiritual work right. Number one. And then two. So what happens? What do you do? First, you awaken certainty. There is light within the situation. It's covered by a clothing, which I'm, I'm seeing right now, but I know with complete certainty that there's light within here, and I beg. Open up my eyes. Because if I don't, and how many times do we, but if we don't, what happens? The sparks of light leave the situation. The assistance that we had, souls from above, leave us. And worse, we become heavy. Because now we have connected to the darkness that we have made true. And therefore we are like the angel of death Things take longer. The travel is more difficult. Life becomes heavier. If we don't though, if we fight that thought that this is dark, that the shell is all that exists, that the clothing is all that exists, but I know that there is light within here. I know that there is a niflaot. There is a tremendous amount of light here. And I beg, I beg the Creator, open up my eyes so I can see it. Then Michael Ve'achat. Then we receive the chiyut, the the support of the angel that gives us chiyut, that gives us quickness and an easy spirit. It doesn't mean that there aren't challenges. It doesn't mean that there aren't difficulties. But it does mean that we approach them as the angel Michael and not as the angel of death. It does mean that they become easier for us to to handle. And this is one of the again. There's a lot more to this. I just want to add one more thing. When speaking about the spies, therefore it's not coincidence, the only time the name Michael appears in the Torah is this week's portion. And it appears in the name of the spies. And one of the names of the spies was Stur ben Michael. Stur, when the Kabbalists are trying to find the fall, they say each one of the names of the spies, you can find the challenge from which they fell. But the only one that they explain is Stu bin Michael. And Stu means that he broke down. He did not stand up to the challenge. And therefore he removed from himself the light of Michael. He removed from himself the chiyut, the lightness of spirit that is the angel Michael. This then is the second tremendous gift of the Shabbat. As Rav Ashley explains in the Wisdom of Truth, in the You Shall Choose Life, the entire purpose of our spiritual work is the opening up of our eyes. To see the light that exists within every situation. That is the singular purpose of our lives. And if you know that, then when the challenges come, you do two things. You have to you have to awaken the certainty. There is tremendous light. There is niflot within the situation. The second thing is you beg. 
גל עיניי ואביטה נפלאות מתורתך. Open up my eyes so that I can see the tremendous light that exists in this situation. And then what? And then your life, a person who achieves this completely, and none of us are there yet, but at least this needs to be our purpose. But a person who achieves this completely, there cannot be pain, there cannot be difficulty, there cannot be sadness. It doesn't mean that life doesn't, it, there aren't challenges in life, but it means that the way you come across them is like the angel Michael, not like the angel of death. Bezrat Hashem, may we merit to understand this, may we merit to give it the priority that it, that it deserves, may we merit to remember this in those challenging times, to awaken the certainty that there is light there, to beg for our eyes to be opened, and then ultimately for ourselves and for the world to live a life with our eyes opened all the time because that life has no pain, that life has no suffering, that life has, that life has no darkness, that life is the life of the Gemara Tikkun, the end of the correction. Shabbat Shalom.